Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Magic Shine Simi 300 LED bike rear taillight. If you were a fan of the Magic Shine Simi 200 but didn't think 200 lumens was enough for you, then we have good news. The new Magic Shine Simi 300 that we have here today combines the innovative features of the Simi 200 but adds an additional LED and a blinding 300 lumen output. In terms of packaging, you can see a very simple black box with the orange accents that matches the Magic Shine logo. Nice glossy visualization of the taillight right on the front. Basic specs printed on the side as well as the back. So we'll go ahead and take it out of the box and go over those specs. Retail price on this is only $59.99, so pretty affordable for the 300 lumen output. It also has brake and ambient light sensors, which means it'll automatically change the output when you're braking to a really bright constant mode. And the smart mode will use the ambient light sensor to switch the output between the day and night mode. You also have the Opti Tracing Downward LED. This is that downward facing LED that we found on the CME 200. And this illuminates the ground underneath you and automatically turns on at night using the ambient light sensor. And during the day it's off. You have a 1600 milliamp battery on the inside that provides up to 200 hours of runtime in the eco mode. And you also have USB Type-C charging, which has been a long-awaited feature of the Simi taillights, which still use a lot of the micro-USB ports. In terms of what comes with the taillight, you get quite a few accessories. You get the C-Post mount, simple rubber strap with the angled mount. You have the saddle rail mount, and this is shared with the other Simi taillights with the same little miniaturized Garmin attachment. You get two zip ties, and you can use this with the rail mount for additional security, although it is pretty secure by itself. You have a USB Type-C charging cable, which you can use to charge the light, as well as the instruction manual, and a little warranty card on the inside of the box. Now let's take a look at the weight of the Simi 300. The taillight by itself comes in at 76 grams. The seat post mount is only 11. Then the simple plastic saddle rail mount comes in at four grams. The Magic Shine Simi 300 combines the innovative features of the Simi 200, but adds even more output and a modern design. The tail light uses what we describe as an open lens design to actually inset the main LEDs behind this little black overlay and then have this extruded transparent lens that wraps around it with a cob LED underneath it. Underneath, you also have their OptiTrace LED, which is this really cool downward facing LED with this spherical lens that helps funnel light down beneath you to make sure you're illuminated at almost any angle. Overall, it's a really sleek design as all the LEDs have the red filaments on the inside, so everything's nice and transparent. So when it's off, you have that Alteza look. So it gives it a really modern appearance. So blends in with the bike, and then when everything's on, you have the nice red glow that you would expect. The main housing of this light also appears to be metal for the surround, and you have CME 300 printed on one side, Madshine on the other. You have the downward facing LED on the underside, the power button on top, the Garmin style mount on the rear with a USB Type-C charging port, which is really exciting. It's one of the first CME lights that's finally up, been updated to use USB Type-C. It does not support on-the-go charging, but you can see this rubber cover is really well designed and fits in, in the spot perfectly. So you just push down a little bit and you have the weather protection. In terms of the mount, you can see it's standard Garmin quarter turn style. It's smaller than your typical Garmin as the taillight is smaller, but you have the same tabs that extend out. So you just simply line up those tabs with the mount and then rotate it to lock into place. So really secure, and it's actually the same size as the other CME 150, 200 products, so you can easily swap the mounts between them. You can see this includes a C-post mount, pretty basic plastic design with this angled rubber piece behind it. And this actually has multiple cutouts, so you can see a nice little circular on the inside, a little D-shape beneath it, and then this flat section. So should accommodate almost any style C-post, and you have a thick rubber strap that goes around and onto the hook. So you can easily leave this on the bike and then pull the taillight off. You also have a saddle rail mount, which is similar to the other mounts they include with their 
other CME products, and you can see you just line it up and then lock it into place. So this will actually go right on your saddle rails, and they also include zip ties to secure it in place if needed, but with the friction fit, it actually works pretty well. In terms of the user interface, it's pretty simple, matches a lot of the CME products. A single press will illuminate the backlight, and this will either be green, red, or flashing red. And that gives you three indicators for the battery status, so you can actually check this before you ride and then charge it if you need it to. A long hold will turn the light on, and then you have a single level menu. So a single press will cycle through low, high to the various flash mode options. You can also see that if a long press will turn it off and you have mode memory. So when you turn it back on, it goes back to the exact mode you were in. Really cool illumination pattern too. You have the nice cob LED and then these two focused LEDs that ensure you're visible from really long distances away. You can also toggle the brake sensor on and off by holding the power button when it's off, and then you should see a flash. So you can see, now if I turn it on, you know the brake sensor's on if that goes blue, and if I were to turn it off again, you'll see that when I turn it back on, it'll just have no color. So again, if you hold it for a few seconds, now if I press it to turn the light on, you can see brake sensor's off. So nice to have that adjustability, I don't need an app or anything additional. You'll notice that the bottom tail light, this little Opti Tracing LED, it always is the opposite of the main mode. So if you're in a constant mode, this will flash. And then if you go to a flashing mode on top, this will go constant. You don't have any control over that bottom LED, so it's automatically on in low visibility conditions. So if you're somewhere darker, it will turn on. And then if you're in a really bright situation, it will turn off. We really wish they would have included an option to turn this off, maybe a longer hold, as that bottom LED does suck down some battery. So if you wanted longer run times at night, you want to stick to the flash modes or more eco option. Otherwise, this LED does uh, use quite a bit of power. Now let's take a look at the output modes. There's five selectable modes, but effectively there's actually 10. Each one of them has a day and a night component. The lower runtime corresponds to nighttime where the Opti tracing downward facing LED is on. There's two constant modes, and then a couple flash modes, standard on off, eco mode, which is lower power, and it gives you 200 hours of runtime and day, and then smart mode, which is daytime flash and a nighttime flash. And that's one of the modes I really prefer, and that's what you see here. You can just leave it on that mode, and it'll automatically switch between day flash and nighttime flash automatically based on the environment. You can see here the LEDs on the taillight really look great. You have those two focused LEDs, so it gives you long distance visibility. So even if you ride a few miles away, cars and cyclists behind you will definitely see you. And that's one of the great things about the focus LED. The Cobb LED ensures you're visible from shorter distances while those focused ones are great for longer distances. So the combination really gives you everything you need. The main downside of the taillight is that you can't turn off that downward facing LED. So even on an overcast day, as you see here, that downward facing LED might turn on. You'll end up with the shorter runtime of the nighttime mode. But as you can see here, as I accelerate away from the camera, you no longer see that ring, but you do see the two focus LEDs, which kind of merge into one. So great long distance visibility and very comparable to the blinder, the Nog blinder, the Bontrager flare R, and other focused LEDs. So it's a nice feature and it's great to see Magishine add more power to it. You definitely don't need the 300 lumens, but it's great for daytime. Here's a closer view and you can actually see that downward LEDs on as it reflects off the C-post. The brake sensor also works pretty well. You can see here, as you come to a stop, it goes to full brightness and then reverts back to whichever mode you're on. The sensitivity of it is actually pretty well programmed, so there are false positive, but it's not that bad. So it usually only activates when you're braking or if you're really decelerating. So it's a cool feature. I still recommend turning off to increase the run times, but it does help cyclists or cars behind you at least notify them that, hey, something's happening. So even here, if you don't come to a full stop, as you decelerate it, it does detect it. Now let's compare the CME 300 with other taillights on the market. I've actually done quite a few Magic Shine CME taillight reviews already. So we actually have the CME 200 V2 here. And you can see very similar designs. They're both quite thick, that rectangular appearance. With the 200, it actually has a more exposed bottom LED and this transparent lens. So the housing itself is a transparent design. While the CME 300 has really modernized it by putting the LEDs on the inside, adding a second one, 
for even more long distance visibility, and then extending the ring out rather than having the inset. So it's definitely a more modern appearance and looks really good on the bike. The CME 150 is also a very similar taillight, which simply took the 200 but eliminated the bottom LED. Same Altezza design, so you can see it's not red until you actually turn it on. But with the CME 300, obviously you get a lot more power and the bottom facing LED. This extruded lens design is also found on the other new CME products. We have the CME 50 here. So you can see same transparent design. What's really cool on this is it almost looks fully transparent. So from the side angle, you can barely see anything. But when you turn it on, you can see it actually bounces off the front and you have that same Cobb LED. So it's a really nice design language that Magishine's been using and gives the taillights a distinct appearance. There's also a lot of other taillights on the market. We have the Knight Rider Bullet. So definitely a different form factor, big red lens. And with this one, you have multiple lighting elements on the front and rear, but it definitely won't hide behind your seat post. So much bigger, but gives you that 360 degree visibility by just using multiple rings. The Bontrager Flare RT is probably a more direct comparison here. Similar highly focused LED and you can see very bright. That's why the 300 has the double LEDs. You don't have the Cobb ring on here though. So when it's on a lower, a closer distances, you don't have the nice illumination pattern. So with the CME 300, you get the multiple lighting elements, including the bottom LED, which illuminates the ground underneath you. If you're looking for different form factors, uh, NOG has quite a few options. This is their R150 and actually combines a full Cobb LED with a focused LED on the bottom. So similar approach, but you can see different form factors, a lot thinner and lower power. You don't have that downward facing LED or quite as few elements and you don't have the 300 output, 300 lumen output that you get here, but you get some cool patterns like the traffic sign, the disco. So quite a few options here. This CME 300 also reminds me a lot of the NOG Blinder. So this is their road. You can see very similar dual LED, but you can see a one piece lens. You don't have this inside, which really captures a lot of dirt on the inside, but similar design. And when the light's not on, you can't really tell if it's a front or rear. Now let's go over the pros and cons for the CME 300. What we like about it is that it's blindingly bright. With 300 lumens, it's more than daytime bright. And it's great for road cycling where you want to be visible. You also have multiple lighting elements, including the dual rear facing LEDs, the Cobb LED ring, then the downward facing LED. So you have visibility from almost any angle. We also really like the smart mode it automatically switches between a daytime flash and a nighttime flash to the, based on the current lighting conditions. So you just set it and forget it. The main negatives with this taillight is the fact that the extruded lens does collect dirt, a little bit of a lip there. So you have to get in there with a brush to really clean it. And as with the CME 200, you can't disable the OptiTrace and LED. It automatically turns on in low light conditions, which means if you're riding on an overcast day, it can still be on and then reduce the run times. Taking everything into account would give the CME 300 a 9.3 out of 10. This is the brightest CME in the lineup and offers a lot of cool tech. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com, as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.